So what's a needs analysis and how do you conduct one? Well, we're going to look at that today. Hey there folks, Tim Slade here. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about what is a needs analysis and how exactly do you conduct a needs analysis. A needs analysis, when we're looking at the development of learning content, is critically important uh, to the success of not only whatever learning intervention you create at the end of the process, but also to validate the time you're spending creating anything in the first place. You know, one of the issues that we run into quite frequently within our industry, whether it's just learning instructional design uh, or, or e-learning, is we oftentimes have subject matter experts or stakeholders who come to us and they request a course. They request some sort of learning um, because they believe in their minds that learning can fix everything. If they see folks not doing something that they need them doing or performance isn't as good as they would like it to be, they think, oh, well, that's because people need more training. So we're going to request a course. And one of the worst things that you can do as an e-learning designer, an instructional designer, um, a leader within your learning organization, whatever you might be doing, the worst thing that you can do is just take that request and go, okay, I'll build a course without validating whether or not that course, that learning intervention, whatever it is that you build, validating whether or not that will actually address the performance issue uh, that, that your stakeholders might be facing. So to answer the question of what is a needs analysis, a needs analysis is simply a process that you go through in partnership with your stakeholders and possibly your subject matter experts to determine A, uh, is there truly a performance issue, and B, can that performance issue be addressed through some sort of learning intervention, right? So the next question we need to answer is, how do you even conduct a needs analysis, right? So for me, a needs analysis is conducted in three major steps, with the first step being determining the desired level of performance. And this is where you spend a lot of time with your stakeholders and subject matter experts and looking at the performance issue that they're bringing to you and determining, all right, so, this is what you think learners are doing or not doing, right? And this is what you want them to be doing. And that might be determined by looking at data, KPIs, might be looking at um, a, the, an audit of the process that your learners are trying to complete, looking at quality assurance results to see what is it that we want learners to be able to do or perform, or what do we think they're capable of doing, uh, and kind of honing in on what is the business goal or objective that we're trying to complete. That process is determined by spending a lot of time interviewing, working with your stakeholders and looking at the data to see what do we want people doing, right? The second step in the needs analysis process is if we've determined what we want people doing, well, what are they currently doing? And that's to determine the current level of performance, right? And this is where we spend some more time looking at the data to say, okay, so if uh, we want people doing X, well, what are they doing now? So let's look at the data and see what's the current level of performance. This might also be done by looking at uh, or spending time with the actual learners and watching them, observing them, seeing what they're doing, um, and, and, and maybe even conducting a task analysis This is to figure out what it is that people are actually performing on the job. Now, once you've done those two things where you've determined what do we want people doing and what are they currently doing, well, we can see the delta between the two. We can say, okay, if people are, you know, selling eight widgets a week and we need them selling 15 widgets a week, we can see the difference between those two to see how much of a performance gap actually exists. Okay. The third step in the needs analysis process is to determine whether or not learning will address that or to determine the cause of that performance gap. Now, this is really critical because oftentimes uh, stakeholders will come to you with uh, steps one and two already answered. They'll determine for you what do we want people doing and what are they currently doing because that's usually the time when they realize we need learning, right? But the real critical part of the needs analysis process is step three, which is determining 
what is the root cause of the performance issue. Now, I mentioned earlier, oftentimes people think it's training or learning, right? But there's a lot of other things that could be affecting um, or causing a, a gap in performance. And it might not just be a lack of skills or knowledge. It might be the environment, right? The environment that they're working in. Maybe the tools that the learners are using to complete a process are clumsy or confusing to use. Um, it might also be motivation. Are they motivated to perform uh, at the level in which they're expected to perform. Sometimes people have all of the skills and knowledge they need in order to do uh, the desired level of performance, but it's just simply a matter of uh, them not being motivated or the tools or the environment that they're working in doesn't allow them to meet that, that level of performance, right? So the third step is determining, is there something else that might be impacting that level of performance. It might be the environment, it might be motivation, or it might be skills and knowledge. Oftentimes we do determine, oh, there is a lack in skills or knowledge. So that's my process for conducting a needs analysis. Again, it's about determining why is there a gap in performance and is that gap in performance caused by a lack of skill or knowledge? And if so, then great, we can, we can proceed forward with some sort of learning inter intervention. And if not, it is our job as learning professionals to present that back to the stakeholder and go, actually, I don't think learning is going to uh, fix this issue. There's some other uh, issues that might be addressing it. So that brings me to the question of the day. What does your process for a needs analysis look like? Do you have additional steps? What other things do you do in your needs analysis process? Share your thoughts or share your experience by commenting below. All right, thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure to click the subscribe button below. And until next time, I will see you around. Hey there, YouTubers. If you liked that video and you wanna learn more about becoming an e-learning designer, click that subscribe button down here. Check out some of my other great videos and follow me at timslay.com.